Hello Australia, welcome to another big episode of The Couch, episode 517 to be exact. We've got Marnie waiting to rabbit on with me, but to do that we have to tell you who else is on the show. Check out who's on the show today. We are talking feng shui today with our very special lady, Michelle Castle. Can't wait for that one. Marnie's back with some great uh, wild things. We're talking rabbits. And later on, our podiatrist is in, Sarah Carter, talking about good foot care and diabetes. And Steve Collins takes us to another adventure around the world in his travel segment. Hope you can stick around and travel with us for the next hour, because the couch starts now. It's showtime on the couch. Yeah, it's showtime on the couch. You can see it from your house. You can watch it from your house. What's up, duck? Is that what they say? What's up, duck? Oh, whatever. I'm bad, bad Bugs Bunny impersonation. But Kayla Barnes has got a great impersonation. She's actually doing it for real. She's singing on set today a beautiful song called Bed of Lies. Please welcome her as she opens the show. Say that your darkest hour will come before you dawn But there was something that I should have asked all along I'ma ask on the song Think of me when you lie Lie down in your bed Your bed of lies And I knew better than to look in your eyes They'd only pretend you would be mine And oh If you saw me, if you looked in my eyes You'd remember our connection and me free from the lies I just figured I was something that you couldn't replace But there was just a blank stare and I couldn't relate I just couldn't understand and I couldn't defend What we had, what we shared and I couldn't pretend When the tears roll down, it's like you ain't even notice them If you had a heart, I was hoping that you would show us them What the hell you really telling me? What you telling me? I could tell you lying, get the hell out, don't yell at me I am one to cut you, I am one to catch you to be a player, you ain't Bill Bellamy. They say you don't know what you got till it's gone. They say that your darkest hour will come before you dawn. But there was something that I should have asked all along. I'ma ask on the song. I've been in that house before. A thousand count, but not a single thread of truth. If I was just another girl. Shame to say that I'm not over you. There's one thing I need to know, so call me when you're not so busy. Just think 
thinking of yourself Do you ever think of me when you lie Lie down in your bed Your bed of lies That is uh, Kayla Barnes and she'll be back at the end of the show to perform again live on the show. Now the reason why we weren't here while that was being recorded because we have rabbits on set so we had to pre-record that earlier on. That's her fault, Marnie. <laughs> Welcome Marnie Jarreau Thanks. with Wild Things. Thanks for coming in today. Thanks. I'm sporting a new look mic today. Um, I know. Look, yeah, look what happened rehearsals. to my mic. We were practicing and yeah. we wondered why your mic cut out. Yes. And it's actually been eaten by the rabbits. So right. Is that one of the things you have to really be careful? <laughs> Honestly, this is a big thing. If you've got a house rabbit, and yeah, that's the best that. that's the best way to keep your rabbit, like a cat, indoors. Um, I'm going to put that Keeps away. them safe from predators, keeps okay. them safe from myxomatosis, yep. which is airborne. But watch out for your cables. Um, you can actually buy cable protectors from any hardware store. Mm -hmm. um, probably should have bought one with me today. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about rabbits. Well, look, they make great com companions. They're fabulous animals, but they do have Better a than few a requirements. Oh, I think so. A partner? Gosh, I think so. And they're very quiet. Yeah, they're, they're quite warm, warm in winter. Um, yeah. Are they and very hard <laughs> to look after? Look, you need to do some research before you purchase any animal. Um, rabbits particularly, I was quite surprised. I'm fostering two rabbits for Safe Perth mm -hmm. at the moment and I thought, right, I need to do some research. And then I realised very quickly how much I didn't know about rabbits. Why are rabbits. you fostering two? Can you tell us what happened to them? Yeah, well, one's like this little guy here. This is Edie and um, she's coming to care. Um, sometimes people get rabbits and they don't realise that they are a, a big responsibility work, yeah. and um, they give them up. Um, other times, yeah, it's, it's... Do you know what it is? People look at a rabbit and think, yeah. oh, it's beautiful and yes. quiet and easy to handle. Yes. They don't think of the feeding, the keeping clean. No the housing, the very housing. important. Housing's massively important. This is an example mm. of a, a hutch that is way too small. And this you see in these front in front of us here. You see these in the pet shops all the time. Now, rabbits need a six by two by two foot hutch as a minimum. And this would be about two foot. This is tiny. Two by With one. an eight uh, foot run attached to that. So they, they in the wild can mm. actually run up to 30 football fields in length in one evening. That's now, their range. We've got a photo of one that we think is perfect. Yeah. Yep. And uh, that one there is a <coughs> massive one, which we're seeing right now on screen. Yes. So why is that one so good? Why is that so important? You really need a lot of exercise area for rabbits. They're intelligent animals. They need to run. They need to exercise. Um, it would be akin to locking ourselves in the bathroom for the rest of the life rest of our lives, which is pretty yeah. nasty really. You don't want to be restricted. It. No, they need the exercise and they need to be stimulated. So you can see a lot of food here. That's great. I saw it's that. great stimulation. Um, now bunnies need up to 80% hay in their now, diet. That's just hay, like horses would eat. Yep, there's various different um, you know, types of it. That's oat and hay. There's there's lots of and different types. what's this one? This is a bunny mix. So this has got uh, chaff, rolled oats, a range of um, sort of green stuff in it. You've got to be careful with, with the muesli that you can some. buy. Some are high in sugar, so make sure that you that. get some that are very uh, low in sugars and, and salt. And so that you don't stuff. want to smoke this one either. <laughs> no, you don't. It's not quite tobacco. And then also a crumble oh. or, a, or a pellet. Often we see pellets for rabbits and guinea pigs. Make sure you're getting a high quality one such now, as this. I heard from mm. Nikki from Safe. Yeah. Yes. So this is one of the best ones, is that true? That's right. This has got a lot of excellent nutrients in it. It's not high in crude fat or any of the baddies. Really, really good. So get the good stuff for your pets. Um, okay. They'll live a lot longer and a lot Sometimes happier lives. Sometimes animals eat better than humans. Oh, they I do. Think. I mean, look, this is my fridge. <laughs> the Brussels moment. sprouts? Brussels sprouts. Will they um, eat these? Celeries? Yeah. Kids they... won't eat it, but rabbits will. <laughs> That's right. Do you have to cook any of this food or will they eat it raw? Always give your rabbits raw food. Okay, very um, important. Never cook. Now, they'd also carrots. I mean, the traditional bugs bunny kind of you know food for rabbits fabulous but only give it to them in small quantities like a as treat. a treat yes particularly the carrot tops they love that this is kale too another leafy green asian leafy greens are gen generally pretty good mm. but do check the do's and the don'ts on feeding your bunny because there's lots of things you shouldn't be feeding them as well. Okay, what sort of things don't we feed them? Well, corn in a lot of, you would think corn, wouldn't you? But corn as an example. As in the yellow corn that yep. you eat on the cob. That's right. And there's a lot of sugars and things in corn. So you want to okay. keep that to um, virtually don't even feed it to your rabbits. And what so. do, do they need to drink water or do they get yeah. enough water from their veggies? No, they don't. These guys actually have a really high, um, they need a lot of water basically. So I actually change my rabbit's water twice daily. Sometimes those bottles aren't great. Mm. They can grow a little bit of um, mould and things yeah, in them. You know the bunny, 
the bunny bottles that you get and put on the side of your hutch. Fresh water, really important. What's mosquito this? nets. Mosquito nets. Now, why? Why mosquito nets? Because myxomatosis in Australia was released to control wild rabbit populations. So where would we put, we put this? Would this be on the this actual goes rabbit? On the, this goes over your hutch. So if you've got an outdoor rabbit, and even if you've okay. got an indoor rabbit, so if this was mosquito proof them. Yes, you'd be fine. This no mix so for you. This is actually quite comfortable. It's quite cool with the air conditioning in here. <laughs> there you go. Not so the you best want something look. Perfect, perfect segue into ventilation. You need a lot of ventilation for your rabbit. So if you do get a mosquito net, make sure it's um, still one that is easily um, breathable um, for the, the breeze to get through. Oh my gosh. What about breathable. the floor? What the, the floor? Because I know that you've got something here. Here you go. So we've got some recycled paper bedding. Now, you need yeah. to give your bunny something soft to sit on. This is fabulous. It's recycle recycled. I am struggling with my words. Recycled no coffee for paper. me today. Recycled paper. Is yes. that all it is? Recycled paper. And you can buy that in a bag. You can. This bag okay, here, various different it. brands of it. Um, what does that do? Why, why not just put sawdust on the floor or rocks or the something like that? Sawdust um, actually can get so, you know, when the rabbits they are breathe. breathing, they can breathe it okay, in. It's not so great for them. That's very dust free. And do they do their pooing in the, on top of that and you have they to clean do. it? They do. You can actually litter train your rabbit just like a cat. So really? provide them a little tray with some of this in it even and you'll find that they are very clean animals like cats and so that they will poo in the one spot. And talking about training them, we don't yes. want to train them about jumping into the oven either because no. a lot of people eat rabbits, okay? Yes. And I've seen them at butcher sh shops and I could never eat a pet. Yes. So if you're thinking of buying a rabbit, folks, <laughs> Please don't eat it. The kids will really get <laughs> yeah, very disappointed. Yeah, look, they, they're look after extremely it. intelligent animals um, and they, they make wonderful pets, but you do have to look after them. This little little one here, Edie, this is Safe Perth Animal. She's up for adoption. She's looking for someone with a lot of love and some great housing requirements. So you can check can out I more on her? our website. Sure. She's she just won't had poo on me, will she? No, she's I'll just do. had a little operation. So very Oh, gently. I have to be very gentle. There we yeah, go. I'll try and hold go. her really carefully. Really close to you. Yep, yep there you go. You. Look at that. Really important to make the bunny feel secure, make sure that you're holding her just perfectly like that. Well With done. a gut like mine, she couldn't <laughs> be anything more than comfortable. Is there anything else you want to tell us about rabbits, uh, important facts? I think, you know, the housing requirements is a big one. People think um, when they go to the pet shop, yep, I'm going to buy a bunny, I'm going to get a hutch. Usually there's not much information to go along with that and the hutches are generally always now too we small. We so. saw a photo of the first hutch. Yes. Let's have a look at the photo of the second one. Yep. Tell us what the second one's all about. So the second one, you can see there's a lot of meshing there, there's a lot of space so the animal can run. Um, now these guys also jump a lot. They like to stand up really? on their hind I legs. I saw this one when yeah. he was nibbling at his hands. <laughs> they like to sort of or stand her. up and spy hop, look around at their environment, but also they love to jump and run and play. So they do need a really large space. And if you don't have that, you can retrofit things. Um, baby play pens, if they're meshed and secure, are perfect. Um, there's a lot of products on the market now, online and also in your pet store, that are better these days now, than a simple hunt. Safe Perth have got some that they want uh, adopted That's or right. fostered? There is a lot of bunnies um, in care, so people fostering them, like myself and Nicole, who's with us um, offset today. Um, there's a lot of animals that need a loving home, and you can check out their website. Now, we do have the, the website mm. safeperth.com.au, is right. that right? Yes, safe perth. Yes. Safe perth.com.au. If you Google, Google Safe Perth, it'll come up and it will show all the little bunnies up for adoption, needing new homes. Um, but anywhere you are, Australia, New Zealand, just look for your local wildlife and animal shelters and you'll find one to adopt. Always nice to have Marnie Giroux back in the studio. We'd love to see you more often this year because yeah, you're wonderful. Thanks, Brad. Thank you for bringing this lovely pet in. And uh, if you're thinking a rabbit's your type of thing, call Safe Perth. They might be able to help you and you might be able to save a life or two as well. Thanks very much, Marnie. Thanks, Brad. Uh, I'll send you the bill for the microphone. <laughs> we'll take a break and we're going to talk travel after the break with Steve Collins. Stay tuned. Well, welcome back to the couch here on Aurora Television. Those commercial breaks take forever. I feel like I've been sitting here for an hour. Let me welcome Steve Collins, of course, our travel guru. Welcome back. Ahoy, Fred. Nice Ahoy. to have you. Is it Captain Steve Collins? Captain, yeah, I'm, I've now got my licence to drive a ship. No, I've just, we're going to talk about cruising today. I was just about to make a joke yeah. and say if we were both wearing a hat, yeah. it'd be fun, hard to work out who the skipper is from McGilligan's Island. Well, that's exactly right. Well, We'd I have actually played the skipper. Uh, have you really? Yeah, at a function, yes. Were you good? I, 
Of course I was good. Oh, of course, Steve Collins. Of course yeah. I was good. Now you've I didn't been get another gig though. Oh, no, well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's probably not a bad thing. Otherwise, we wouldn't have you here talking. That's exactly travel. right. Yes. You've just been on a fantastic cruise. Yeah, I have. I've, I've been. Uh, I've done the Margaret River cruise. It's a mm. three-day cruise out of Fremantle. It was on P&O's Pacific Jewel, and uh, it was a, just a great adventure. We went. There was a group of us that went, and here's a ship here. This is fantastic. This is from uh, Steve Cam. Yeah, this is Steve Cam, and this is us. That's a magnificent ship. It's how it big takes is it? about two and a half thousand passengers. It's got 14 decks, um, and they're really good the way they get you on board. And uh, the cabins were very lovely. This is my cabin. I had a mini suite, and you look at it. Lots of room. That's just a mini beautiful. Suite. This is a mini suite, and you get this magnificent view. And I tell you what, just to sit on that balcony as you're at sea, and because it wasn't all that rough, so it was wonderful. This is us uh, heading out of uh, Fremantle Harbour. Uh, and it was a beautiful day and it's a great way. The, the ship is actually quite silent. It doesn't make a lot of noise and it just sort of soothes, soothes its way out of the office. As soon as they leave port, they have a party and there's dancing and there's bands and there's a lot of drink. So uh, that's where our floor lot, manager got to. That's where he went to. Uh, and there's uh, the, the Maritime Museum. Museum. That's a fantastic building, but it was just fantastic. Steve, you know, cruises yeah. aren't for everybody, are they? No, they're not. Um, and a lot of people are scared of it because I think they'll get seasick. This is, uh, they have the edge, which is for extreme sport, and you go zip lining across the crowd on the 12th death. But they're not a lot of people, have, and a lot of people really are scared mm. of getting seasick. I didn't have that problem at all. Uh, we we travelled with a lady who, who was very worried about it, and she was fine. I must she wore I... a little band and had a few tablets, but no, no, it yeah, wasn't Yeah, I did one of those four-day things, but I must admit... You I... were in rough seas, though. Yeah, I was in rough seas, yeah. but I also did the wrong thing. I actually took the, the seasick tablets too late. No, you've got to take them before, before you, go. you get on the board. Yeah, and, that's and, right. and I actually got quite ill on board. Yeah. But you know what's great about the, the cruise ships? They've got their own doctors on board. Cost yeah, they've got medical centres, yeah. And it was good. Um, and they've got lots of other things happening on board as well. What did you do when you were there? Well, you know what? The thing about a cruise is you can do as much as you want or as little as you like. But here we go. This is the martini mixing class, and I was part of that. I was the... I was the Mixer before that, Sharon. Only the before mixer her. or the drinker? No, no, you drink them all. Trust me, you, you, there's, there's, they do four martinis and everybody gets up and has a go. And it's, fa it's a great entertainment. Straight after that, I did the wine appreciation class as well. Uh, although I'd been, I was full of martinis, so I don't know how much I appreciate the, the, oh, the uh, look at that, something close wine. to our heart. Now this is a buffet. They have a buffet. They have several restaurants. They also have the waterfront with restaurant, which is more formal. Yeah. And they have salt by Luke Mangan, mm. which you pay 50 bucks for, and it is the best meal you'll have. And they have another one called Luna, which is Asian inspired. There's some more drinks. Lots of cocktails get drunk on this boat. What is that orange boat? This okay. is the tender because we docked just off Bustleton and people were going on tours, you see. And so that, that thing just goes to and from oh, the boat the Oh, it's not the, the one time. that they turn back the boats with, the orange no, no, one. That no, 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 that you're no, no, no. <laughs> it's <laughs> the same colour. And here we go. This is the shows. The shows are fantastic. It's all very, very they high are. tech. You get shows every night and different shows every night. And then uh, you've got bands on uh, board. There's a number of bars, and each of these bars has got a band or a singer and or something. And they've got a casino. You can play got the golf. Casino. The casino wasn't operating because we were still in Australian okay. waters. But uh, I know, I'm not that in casino, so I wouldn't yeah. have gone to it. Yeah. And here's the end of the show. It's How just, good is that? But look at, look at, but I mean, look at the setting. I mean, it's really very high class. Uh, they had a circus hmm. act, a circus performance on there. And the, my daughter and her friends, they were going to craft classes. You can go if you like playing games, Monopoly, Chair, Scrabble. They've that, got they've a place got a where you can do all that. They've got a spa, oh, they're all massages. Hard the job, yeah. My my daughter went and got uh, uh, aromatherapy or something like that. And do that. they still have the kids zone, like yeah, time the kids zone? Are, yes, sort of because uh, friends on board they had they had uh, two Litleys and they had a thing. I think it's called the Shark Attack or something. You know what? Yeah. They keep them. Oh, this is the dawn service. We came in back into Fremantle. Okay. Are we going to hear this one? Yeah. Let's hear this one. We'll put it up. There you go, that was done on yep. the boat. This was dawn on Anzac Day, coming yep. into Fremantle, and it was one of the best. So you celebrated on board. Commemorated, you never celebrate Anzac Day. Oh yeah.
Well, it was. We were coming in just before dawn. It was oh, fantastic. Something new it was as well. absolutely brilliant. Very, very moving ceremony. So, tell me, if you, if I was going to go on one of these yeah. cruises, what are they worth to go on? Well, it a, it depends on uh, what grade of deck you go on, mm -hmm. whether you're going to have an inside cabin or an outside cabin. They start for as little as just a couple of hundred dollars. We mm -hmm. had a mini suite, so we paid extra, of course, but oh, it was worth it. Um, and it depend, it depends on how many because that they have. Uh, they have quad quad cabins with yes, four quad people, share and, and they go or they have. And do they uh, still let you eat at so many different restaurants for yep. free? And then if you don't like yep. those, you've got yeah, you do. Playing Look, with. you've got you've got a couple. You've got uh, in this case we had uh, the buffet, we had the waterfront, which was there's sit plenty down. of food. There was cafe, there was a cafe, there's yep. se several bars, but they also have uh, the very exclusive restaurants, Salt by Luke Mangan and and uh, Luna, which is Asian, and they were fan fifty bucks to go to Salt. Yep. For an all you can eat, fantastic meal. You pay for the alcohol, mm. but it's all inclusive. And I tell you what, it was absolutely brilliant. It was a, it was a memorable, memorable meal. Now, I know we've only got a couple of minutes, but we're going to talk yep. about Penang. We are going to go to Penang because I happen to have lunch with Jimmy Chu, who was probably the world's most there famous is. There. designer. Now, tell me who he is. He's the world's most don't famous know. shoe designer. He made the shoes for Princess Diana, uh, the girls in Sex in the City, and I don't know much about that show, but they... Um, they were all talking about their Jimmy Choo's. Uh, when I got lunch, just about every woman I know was swooning. He said, oh, can I replace you? I didn't get any free samples, by the way. But he was here because he's, uh, uh, he's from Penang. He had very humble beginnings in mm. Penang in Malaysia. Okay. And uh, he was promoting Penang. Telling us, and I had a good conversation about his life there. Uh, Penang itself, Georgetown. Mm -hmm. Uh, is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and there's all no, this I've street there. art there. Awesome. It is fantastic. All this street art there, just on the walls around the city, and you just wander around. Um, that's that some awesome. of the food, the hawker food. Penang is also very famous for its hawker food, its street food. You know what I found out? You have to be a Malaysian to be able to, to cook the Malaysian, the, 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 the Penang street food, because otherwise it tastes different. And the other thing is, there's just so much going on. It's a big multicultural city. And there's so much going on there. It's a fabulous place. Georgetown, particularly, there's temples. Uh, that you've got uh, the Chinese I've been Buddhist there. temples. It's yeah, that, that's just wonderful. You've got all sorts of places. You've got uh, the, the cafes. You've got the old shop houses. You've got this is a magic that was temple the train, on wasn't it? This is a yeah, a little cable railway, and it goes up to this massive, great big temple on top of a hill. It's beautiful. And you get these wonderful views all over. That's at the mansion. That's an mm. old mansion, uh, and the lady there was showing us around. And it's full of the old dresses. A lot of people go there for their wedding photos. That is a massive statue. It's it's about eight stories tall. You can't you can't get the idea, the full idea of the size. But you see that little stairway Incredible. going up to it. And as I say, you've got everything. You've got him, uh, Hindu temples there. You've got Buddhist temples there. Uh, you've got Christian churches. Uh, and it's just a fantastic And do you know what I've got to say, yeah. just to just, just And to you've quickly, got these, the jetties and stuff. Beautiful. If you yeah. want to go to Penang, folks, the best time to go is now. Uh, Malaysian Airlines are offering some great deals to get people back on board. They are. Um, and I think it's a good time. If you, if you feel like travelling and you're not superstitious, uh, which I am, but uh, I'd fly Malaysian. The thing about if you go Malaysian, there's a very, very short turnaround time. You, you fly into KLIA, you've funny. got maybe about an hour there to go through customs of immigration and, and connect, catch a connecting flight to Penang. Fantastic. And I have actually been to Georgetown. I liked it yeah. better than Penang uh, because well, you've got... Well, it's on Penang. Penang is yeah, the island. It's the Georgetown's the main What's city What's the part there? where all the hotels Badu are? Ferengi, That's it. That's I didn't, didn't like that. I thought are. it was boring. Georgetown, yeah. I could actually... I love that. Well, if the you've got kids now, there's a great new uh, adventure park up, uh, yeah. up near Badu Ferengi. Beautiful. Fantastic for kids 12 years and, and younger. It's Thank you, Steve really Collins. Good. You off another holiday? Yeah, I think next time I talk to you, I think I might have been to Singapore by then. We'll find out. Fantastic. If you want more information about Steve, check out his website. It is, of course, radioroaming.com. All the details are there on screen. And check out thecouch.com.au. And you can find out all his famous interviews that he's done. And, and he gives you insights into travel destinations. It's probably the best travel segment on radio, but on uh, the net. Thank you very much, Radio Roaming. Thank you very much, Fred. Now, if you want more information about how to get in contact with our website or any of our guests, check out this contact promo. If you're looking for more info on anything you've seen on today's show, head to thecouch.com.au. It's where you'll find all the links for our guests, plus clips from the show, backstage photos, and even exclusive movie reviews. You can also sign up as a couchie and be part of our competitions, including Spin It to Win It. 
New Zealand viewers, that's open to you too. So jump online and check it out now. Thecouch.com.au that is how you contact us here at The Couch. And my next guest is a fabulous person. She's the co-convener, I call a coordinator, of FERN. Now, FERN stands for Fremantle Environmental Resource Network, and she's with us today. Karen, thank you for being here today. Thanks, Fred. Thanks it for having nice me. It is nice to have you here. Is this your first time on TV? No. No? Well, tell me what you've done. <laughs> Are you allowed to tell us, or is it <laughs> something naughty? Okay. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm here today because I'm a nutritionist yep. and um, I run the cafe at Fern. How long have you been doing that? I've been a nutritionist just for about the last six years. What does a nutritionist do? Because looking at me, you probably think I could probably help you. <laughs> a nutritionist tries to educate people around healthy eating. They so, say tries. Yeah, yeah, How do you do that? Is it very hard when people don't... Like, what's the problem with society today? Do we eat? fast food too much? Are we all too busy? What's the problem? Why do we need nutritionists? It's too, it's too much processed food so we've got to get back to eating food that looks like where it came from I'll say in a nutshell. Yeah. Now you're co-convener and you run uh, the, the cafe down at Fremantle there. Tell us a little bit about that. What's Fern all about? The cafe, well my big passion is raw food so I educate um, people around raw food and the cafe is there um, in, as part of the community, it makes it very affordable and accessible for a lot of people. Um, we serve vegan food as well, so it's um, educating people around a plant food diet mm. and the sustainability aspects of that too. Fantastic. Now, if I want to go down to Fern, do they only deal with food or do they do other stuff as well? No, we have uh, recycled bicycles, um, we have a garden project. Um, we're doing some upgrades at the moment, so and it's just community building, yeah. Fantastic, and you enjoy that? I love it, absolutely love it. Now, there's a lot of these sort of environmental places up. We've got the city farm, and we've got one I was saying to you in Stuart Hill. Why is Fern different? Um, Fern's a long, Fern's a long-standing one. I think it's been part of the Fremantle community for ten years now. Um, so it's great, it's very child friendly, there's a sand pit, people can just come and enjoy the space. Not everyone has a garden these days. So it's good for families and individuals and Absolutely. kids obviously love it as well. Yeah. Do you have animals down there as well or not? We've got chickens at the moment yeah, yeah and um, a couple of cats. Yeah. Do you think raw food has really picked up over the years? Because I know we've had someone on the show cook raw chocolate and I must admit it's a lot stronger than the normal chocolate for me. But what's the unique thing about, when people hear raw food, people say, well, how can it be eaten if it's raw? Tell us how, what, what the whole idea behind raw food is. Well, the secret is making it really delicious, at least as delicious as the cooked equivalent, and it's just helping people's health. So it's empowering people to take back control of their own health. So is there certain foods, like with fish, how do you make that as raw food? Well, we don't, we don't do raw fish. fish. Um, what sort of food can I look forward to having there? Well, you can have raw cheesecakes. As you said, you can have raw chocolate. We do um, raw breads, crackers, How salads. do you do raw bread? We do an onion bread that people love. So what, what would the ingredients Deep. be in the bread? Uh, I think that one's onions, walnuts, sunflower seeds, a bit of tamari. And, and you can actually slice it and toast it? Well, or? we do it. We spread it out on a dehydrator sheet so that it just dries like one slice thick. So you can dehydrate food and change the texture. Now if people want to get involved with Fern, can they give donations or become a volunteer? They, they can give donations, they can become members, mm -hmm. um, they can just call in and frequent the place. We have dinner by donation every night. So tell me how that works, as you say you have a few hundred people come down. Yeah, Monday night's a big night because that's a long standing tradition. So we have, um, it's. We, we suggest $10 and that's usually a three course meal. Three courses for 10 yeah. bucks. Steve and I better be down on that next <laughs> list, I think. Yeah. I'm going to pay 20 and have two meals. I reckon it's worth it, Steve. So we see it as community building, plus it's educating people that healthy food can also taste It's a lot of fun as well. Wonderful. Sounds like you have a lot of fun. We have, have a lot of fun. performers or anything like art, there's, artists there's a, there's a piano there, there's a drum kit and whoever feels like it forms a bit of a band on the night, well, so maybe Steve always a bit of come music. Along then. <laughs> Steve and I have always wanted to be in a band. Now, the website, if people want more information, what is that? Uh, I think it's fern.org.au. You are correct, it's on screen right mm -hmm. now. Would you like to pay for the car now? <laughs> We've actually got some books here. I'm going to hold them up to our good friend here, um, Kayla. Now, this is one of the books. Can you tell us what this one's all about? Welcome to my raw food world. 
that's uh, a book I wrote when I discovered raw food so that uh, West Australians would have a locally produced book um, to make it really accessible. And I've also got the, div the v DVD, I assume yeah. that is. Yeah. Uh, tell us about that one. I give that away with the book, so the idea is you might watch mm. that and then pass it on to someone else. It's called that might Rejuvenate help. with Raw. Absolutely. So you're obviously very passionate and converted to raw food. Do you eat any cooked food or are you trying I, to be good? I do eat a little bit of cooked food from yep. time to time. Uh, simple, unprocessed. So in, in a nutshell, why do people need to come down to Fern and be part of it? What, why is it so special? I think it's, it's when you get involved in a community space, you learn the joy of that, the joy of giving and being involved. And uh, community building is what it's all about, just being a part of it all. Yeah. Fantastic. Couldn't have said it better myself, and I won't. Thank you very much to Karen for Thanks, coming in Fred. today. She's one of the coordinators at Fern. And uh, if you haven't checked it out for yourself, thecouch.com.au, you'll see the website there for Fern, which is fern.org.au. And they do some wonderful work. You can go down on a Monday, get that $10 meal. Do you need to book, Karen? No, any Just night of the week. Yep. I'll be there. <laughs> see you soon. Thank you very much. We'll take a quick break. We've got a coming up, Cara Walker will be coming up. And also going to talk to our podiatrist, Sarah Carter. Stay with us. You're watching episode 517, The Couch. See you soon. It's been a very busy day today here on the couch, but with me today is our good friend Cara Walker, Talking Green. Welcome back. G'day, Fred. How nice are you? Nice to have you back in that beautiful top. Thank uh, you. Dress, can we I look say. really nice together. We do. Our yellows well. and our reds. I very like it. Very elegant. <laughs> very Anzac day last week. It is last week. The very poppy colours. Very nice. Beautiful. What are we talking about today? Transitional. Transition towns. Transition towns. You know, towns. I have been involved with sustainability a little bit. I don't know if you realise that. But I do um, remember. Yes. <laughs> for a few years. For a few years now. Now this is the best movie. Movement I have seen happening around the What's world. What's it mean? What's transition? Okay, so counts? a transition. So transitional. It's about uh, moving forward with things. And it started in the UK with a small town called Totnes. And a gentleman had studied permaculture principle, and he thought, well, how can we take permaculture principles, which is what you've mm. learnt about before with gardening, mm -hmm. and take it into a framework of community, so we can build community structures, we can uh, build economic resilience within local community yep. um, and all kinds of fantastic things but on a community level rather saying the politicians are doing it wrong, this group's doing that, they're digging out a hole saying hey we're a bunch of people, we've got skills, let's see how we can work together. So it's the community putting their skills set together exactly. to Skill make a better sharing and enhancing to make a better community life. Do we have that here in Australia? Well, they, they workshopped really well together and then they wrote all out exactly how they did it. They've published a whole load of books and now there's over 1,000 transition groups over 48 different oh, wow. countries around the world. Um, in Perth, I think we have six transition Are we towns. transitioning well here? We are transitioning fantastically. Why do we need to transition? <laughs> well, I think it's about uh, the action side of things. You know, I think if you're going to complain about something, then what are you doing about it you know mm. and I think that's the difference with transition towns they're not saying we have issues they're saying okay yeah there's problems but you know what we can do I'm you're really good at growing tomatoes in basil why don't we all come to your house on Sunday and you can show us what you do some great tips so you put the community skills at, at work training other people exactly and then we do that and then you know after a while we work out that there's a bit of land left over mm. next to a school let's ask if we can use that land and grow food for say the school kids and teach them how to do it and it's just about this growing movement that happens on a on the local Level. Now we were talking to Fern earlier on before Great. we were in the yeah, last yeah. segment and what I, I love that's been springing up a lot are these community gardens. They are. There's one Fantastic. in Yokine which yeah. I drive past there in Flinders Street yeah, yeah. and they've got the chickens out there now. Yeah. They've got those big portable garden yep. things, I don't know what you garden call them, bed. planters type thing. Yeah. And they've got animals and they've got kids in there and yeah, they're, they're, it's like a, a fantastic family day. It is. It's a total uh, reversal of what we've seen for ages. Everyone was putting in all these um, parks to play in and mm -hmm. now if there's a bit of space, um, the council are giving us approval to get our veggies in there. How and wonderful is that? And it's really increasing um, community connection, conversation points. And you know what's been really fantastic is this movement happening in Melbourne where they've got a lot of um, high density areas mm -hmm. and uh, new immigrants who come to Australia don't have people to talk to and they give them a little bit of the land and oh. a little plot each they come downstairs they get to garden together they can share produce make friends and they make friends and it is actually completely turning around how they interact it's so really how far have we got on this stage of transitioning transition towns is doing really well um, I'm part of one in Stirling there's like I said there's six happening in Perth and I really recommend looking them up mm. all you have to do is go on to transition network and check out all the different things happening you can put in your postcode and find out where there's a transition town happening near you if not there's a whole lot of references
references on how you can actually set up your own transition towns. I like Rally it. your community and get things happening. And it sounds so basic, but it makes a world of difference. Now, and that's what needs I to happen. I am so glad you cleared it up because here I am. I live in Balga and I thought you were going to transition us into Netherlands. <laughs> I thought, I really am. I'm for you're this. You're on that train. But you're actually you talking about living better, sustainable. <laughs> living uh, better. You know, and, you know, gardens, and it's ecological resilience as well. You know, rather than spending all your money at um, the big guys, Coles and Woolies, about saying, hey, let's support Grow the your local own. government. And then that, oh, sorry, local businesses. And then that money is spent within their own local businesses. I thought I'd never so. hear that word, support the local government from your no. mouth. No, I do though. I do a lot. I work I a lot with my do. local government. You do a lot of work with the schools as well, which is wonderful. Yeah, schools, local government. I like working with my local council. How can we get involved? What do you need the public so to do? So head to Transition Network, transitionnetwork.org. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know which one we're at, but that's okay. That camera. Oh, there we are. Hello. <laughs> head to transitionnetwork.org or you can head to the Couch website, thecouch.com.au. You'll find the segment guide mm -hmm. where my smiling face is Ecofairies.com. Ecofairies. There's three websites to go to. There's How so cool many, is that? so much Online, reference. Online, we've got uh, the Facebook one too. Love the idea. I love when you bring these new topics to us, even mm. though we're a little bit held back from trying these new things. You're in the garden so all the time, Fred. Do you know I know what? You are. You're out I've got to tell you, I am in the garden here. at the moment because someone keeps pinching my bloody plants. Oh, so I'm constantly out there replanting your community them. into a, better a jail. Community I'm going to transition <laughs> these people into jail. Thank you very much. Thanks, well done. Fred. Thank you to Carol Walker for being on the show today. It's always wonderful to have a and uh, it's nice to have you uh, as part of the furniture as well. Yes, here, thank talking you. Transitions. Yeah, part of the old, old crew now. Now, if you'd like to win a $50 voucher, somebody else that's transitioning, they want to give those vouchers away to two lucky people, this is how you enter. Uh, but first, I need to tell you that Faster Pasta have got some fantastic new menus. Check this out. Introducing Pasta Pasta's dinner menu. Exciting new dishes with the freshest ingredients like porchetta, slow roasted pork belly on a panzanella salad and linguine gamberi with Australian prawns. It's our menu from Pasta Pasta. That's how good it is and I've been down and I've tried their menu straight away because I didn't want to miss out. But you can also win a $50 voucher. We're, we're giving away two today. All you have to do is put the word Pasta Pasta. That's the code word. Faster Pasta. It's on screen right now, so you've got no excuse for spelling it wrong. Send it to 0439 929 929. That's 0439 929 929. And don't forget your name and address needs to be on that SMS, otherwise we will delete that SMS. Thank you very much to Faster Pasta, and we're giving away two this week, so please uh, enter now. Anyone in Australia can enter, and we'd love to give those away to you during the week. Okay. Now, Sarah Carter, seems like a rush today. Thank you for coming in today. Thank you for having me. Sarah's a, pod a podiatrist from UWA. Yes. Tell us a little bit about Sarah. Um, well, obviously, I'm at the next stage of my research now, so just done my first bit of data collection for my PhD, and so that's going well. Now, UWA, for those people living over east, is the University of Western Australia. Yes, it is. It and is. you guys have got a podiatry department? Yes, we have a podiatry department and a student clinic. Uh, where we're doing a lot of um, treatments uh, and like yourself, you come to us. Look, I love giving you guys a good rap because I go down there. It's not that I can't afford to go to the, the podiatrist in mm. my area, but the thing I love about it is these are all students and they've got fantastic qualified professionals that are there to guide these students. One thing, they're very thorough. Two, they're very interested mm. in your mm. problems because it teaches them on how to deal with these problems in the future. Yes. They deal with diabetes and all these, I'm sure you're going to touch on this, but I, I've been having some great treatment there and it's only $35 mm. so you know even if you can't afford a hundred dollar podiatry bill go down to UWA they need more and more people to book in give them a call because they would love to have you there as a customer and they'll look after your feet Sarah what are we talking about today we're talking about the diabetic foot which mm. is a very important topic in oh, Australia at go. the moment <laughs> I've got a diabetic foot because um, diabetes is the leading cause of leg amputations so it's, uh, how does it happen? Because people say, well, how can that happen? What causes it? Well, there's a few factors that, that are going on. So first you have um, compromised blood flow. Mm -hmm. So that's with your large blood vessels within your lower limb. You have increased risk of atherosclerosis. So that's the fatty deposits. And then you have the, the <laughs> microvascular blood supply. Yep. So that's your little capillaries. And they tend to get more damaged in, in the foot as well as in the kidneys and the mm. eyes. So that compromises the blood flow to your foot. You also have increased risk of infections because it... Um, Ulcers. 
Yes, mm. yes, with the ulcers there's a major problem. Now, my dad had one of those, just to give you a real example. He stepped on something in the backyard. Yeah. He's obviously got neuropathic problems, which mm. means he can't feel your feet because mm. he's diabetic. He's also 80 years old. Walked into the backyard, he got a hole under his foot, yep. it ended up rotting away, and dad thought it was, the doctor thought it was an infection, but instead it was actually um, an ulcer, a yeah. diabetic ulcer, and he had to have his toe removed because it had spread too far. Mm, mm. It's terrible, isn't it? it that's, that's, that is at the worst end scenarios, definitely. And we, the main thing that we want to do is prevent that from happening, and that's why we do the diabetic screenings to work out if you're at low risk or medium risk or high risk of developing a diabetic foot ulcer. So we do things like check your protective sensation. So that's using one of these little devices here. Mm -hmm. It's called a monofilament. It's not sharp. It's yep. just like fishing line. Do you want to do it to me? And uh, it's got 10 grams of pressure. So keep doing it nice and slow so we can get a camera around to it. So but if you can't feel this on your foot... See, I can feel that, foot, but is it supposed to be painful or just... No. No, it, it might feel a little bit sharp. It does a little bit, yeah. Yeah, but it's only 10 grams of pressure, yeah. and if you can't feel this, then we say that you're insensate. So it, it basically, you're pricking my hand or my foot, yeah. so that is quite sharp. Yeah, so that's good. it's not going to pierce the skin or anything like that. It's just putting 10 grams of pressure. So if, if you can't feel that in certain areas of your foot mm. on the bottom of or the plantar surface, yep. then we call you insensate and you have no longer your protective sensation. So that's if, if you've got some shoes on and you've mm. been out walking and you get a stone in your shoe, if you have an insensate foot, you won't be able to feel that stone in your shoe. Yep. So it's going to stay it's there and it's going to foot. cause a sore. And then with your compromised blood flow and um, your weakened immune system, that's yeah. going to develop into an and ulcer. And you are very lucky that I'm here because I've got <laughs> lots of examples. I went down to Bunbury and I actually stepped on a nail. Yes. And I, and I thought my shoe was uncomfortable for about two weeks. <laughs> and then I went underneath my shoe and pulled out a nail yes. and realised that this nail had been stabbing me in the foot. Yeah. And it was so... I'd take off the shoe and the pain would go. Yeah. And I said, it must be these shoes. And then realised <laughs> there was a nail there. So something so simple... Yeah. Can actually, if I'd left it in my shoe, mm. it could have ripped my, the bottom of my feet. It could, it could. Caused a diabetic ulcer. Definitely. And that's why we always want people to check their feet at the end of the day, have a look in their shoes, have them a shake around, make sure there's nothing inside them that could be causing um, injury to them. So this is called again? It's a monofilament. So that's what your podiatrist will test on your yes. feet to see feeling. Yes. Tell me about these other Okay, the other one, this is for vibration sense. I'll that's give you my another hand important again. thing. So, so what, does that, what does that do? It's going to vibrate um, bony prominences yep. and um, vibration is one of the other things, sensory things that, that become yeah. compromised with diabetes. And if you don't feel that like I didn't in my top, my toes, yes. what does that mean? It puts you more at risk of developing a diabetic foot ulcer. Okay. So these, we, we do all these assessments to work out your risk. And probably um, your level of feeling? And your level of feeling, yes. And what's this one that looks this one, like a radio? <laughs> this one is a, a Doppler ultrasound, and um, we use it to uh, hear your pulses. So, if, so you, if you were trying that, say that was my toe now, and you were yep. running it underneath you my feet. You probably wouldn't do it on the toe. You'd where do, where do you you'd do, do it over feet? where you can feel a pulse. So there? So you've got two pulses in your okay. feet. Um, you've got one on the top, mm -hmm. which is called your dorsalis pedis pulse. Say that again. <laughs> dorsalis pedis. I'm glad you said pedis. I thought, okay. And <laughs> thought what I that said do? something else. Yeah, I did for a minute. I thought, oh, what's that? Will you try that? So what does that show? Well, it's going to tell us whether you have a triphasic or a biphasic or monophasic And what pulse. are those three? So that's the sounds. So normally you should have three sounds. Um, but if you're a diabetic patient, you may only have one sound or two sounds. So we Is that good or bad? No. See, if you have less sounds, that means that there's less elasticity in your um, arteries. So it's not going to produce those sounds. Sarah, you're scaring me enough to want to go and see a podiatrist. Yes. What do we need to do? If we're concerned and we haven't had our feet checked, yes. feet should be just like teeth. Hey, mm. if you're diabetic, even more important, folks, more you need important, to go yes. and get them checked. What do people need to do? Uh, Look we into have, this camera and We have them. a website um, for the UWA Podiatry Clinic. Uh, where you can call up and book an appointment to have your uh, diabetic foot screening. We also, um, luckily in this country, we have Medicare and they also have the Enhanced Primary Care Plan, which is through organised through your GP. And that entitles you to five visits each year to an allied health. So you might see 
two visits for a podiatrist, one for a diabetic educator, um, and maybe two visits to a physio. And that's over each year. So if you don't have um, a diabetic um, health care plan or an EPC, uh, get one from your GP and come and visit us and that should cover your appointment costs. Sarah, you are just a bundle of information. Thank you very much for coming in. Do you know what you're talking about next time? No, I haven't worked that out that far. I mean, is there any particular topic you'd like to hear about? Well, I'm going to leave it open. Maybe yeah. our viewers, if you'd like to be yeah. involved and, and want some information on podiatry or foot care, send us an email, SMS, and we'll pass it on to Sarah. Otherwise, I'll get you to have a look at my feet. <laughs> Maybe not. Thank you very much to Sarah Carter from UWA Podiatry, the clinic. Don't forget, they do some great work. Check it out on the website. Thank you to Cara, who's sitting right next to me. Maybe I can check Cara's feet out in the break. We'll be back with more <laughs> after the, the break. See you then. Time now to talk feng shui and we've got someone that knows all about it here in WA. Her name is Michelle Castle. She's the director of Complete Feng Shui and I welcome her to the couch. Hi Fred, how are you? Good, thank you. Thanks for coming Excellent. in. Thank you. Now just run us through basically what feng shui means for those people who are novices. Okay, feng shui is um, different things to different people actually. So you can look at feng shui from the interior of the home. You can also look at it from the exterior of the home. And today I think we're talking about form school, which really looks at placement within your home, um, with your bedroom, with your lounge room, um, and very importantly, the placement of exterior wise of your home too. Well, let's start with the, the bedroom layout. Yes. How does that, how does feng shui affect that? Well, it's like a desk or a chair. Your bed actually needs to have support. So um, when you're sleeping, you want to make sure that your bed's in a really nice supported area within your room. So preferably not under a window and not in line with the door. Now, why not under a window? What, why is that bad? They say that your energy will be drawn. So if you're sleeping under an, um, a window, it puts you in an insecure position. So you've got the window and the glass behind you. So if your bed's going to be against a window, which they do in all the glamorous TV shows mm. and movies, they always have them in front of the windows. But I think they often have really heavy drapes as well. So, so that gives you a little bit of support. So when choosing a bedroom layout, how would you suggest is the best? Um, you actually want a bed that's actually quite balanced and quite solid. So your bed should actually be somewhere that's really comfortable and well supported. Um, so you should have equal bedside tables, equal bedside lamps, that type of thing. And a pretty good solid headboard too. And does colour matter? Colour does matter. Colour actually has a very strong vibration. So um, colour's a whole spectrum within itself and from the feng shui point of view. Are certain colours better than others? Like uh, what's white? Um, white's actually a metal element, so white's actually quite a calm colour. So when you're looking at bedrooms, yeah, you don't want anything too heavy. Um, you definitely want to steer away from black. If you put too much black or blue in a master bedroom particularly, it can cause financial losses, which really? is something that a lot of people don't realise. So black yes. is not a good thing. It's no. like a, depression, a depressing yeah, colour. It's, it's just too heavy for a bedroom. It looks gorgeous in the modern homes, but it's not usually good for the occupants. Superstition says don't do it. Don't Bad do luck. it. You'll what lose about money. Red? Um, red's great in the early years of uh, marriage and for young relationships um, but just a touch of red not too much red it's a little bit too overstimulating okay and, and is it true I used to hear never put point your feet towards the door so never sleep with the door at your feet yeah is that they true? say that was the, that's the coffin position it's like you carry it out in the coffin from from that position okay. within your room so it, that is actually a little bit superstitious at this point in time simply okay. you can close the door and so all of a sudden you're in a safe position. We've got the bed not under the window. Yes. We've got it not being black. Black yes. furniture is no good. Make the furniture balanced. Yes. Pick a good colour. White yes. and red aren't too bad. And uh, now we move on to the lounge room. Yes. Now, how can we affect our feng shui? Well, the lounge room, um, once again, you want your couch and your furniture to always be in a secure position. So you'll find if you've got furniture that's floating within the room, so there may be a couch um, with two side chairs. The side chairs may be against a wall and the couch may be exposed. Now, where it's exposed, you'll find people won't sit on it, or if you do sit on it, you'll constantly get up and down because you're not quite sure what's behind you. So, really? Yeah, it puts you and in you an insecure position. And you know what? I actually position. believe you because in my house, I've got a lounge on the left against a wall. Yes. 
and the one on the right is is it's got a kitchen sink behind it, which is about a metre away. Yes. And I always sit on the left because I like the fact that I've got the wall behind me. Yes, yes. So it's it's just I thought that was just my no, good luck. No, a, a lot about for, form school and a lot about placement within the home is actually about support. So ideally, even the um, shape of your home should, um, in fact, be like a great big armchair. So you should always position yourself so you've got strength and height behind you. You've got open space in front of you and then you support it on both sides. What about television? Is it important where you put the TV apart from reception? Um, the, no, not really. Um, not ideally in the bedroom, unfortunately. Really? TVs aren't good in the bedroom. Too much energy. Um, it can often cause you to be quite drained and for you to not sleep too well. So um, I don't, ideally not in the bedroom. But no, as long as you you can clearly see it, I think your TV's what okay. What else is important? Do we have rugs? Are rugs a good thing in um, the Rugs are good. Rugs um, create comfort. Um, you obviously always want a balance of different types of en energy um, within the home. So your furniture um, is in balance with colours and textures and things like that. Um, now, does it matter if furniture is the cheaper type or the more expensive type? No, it doesn't. doesn't as matter. long as you're comfortable sitting in that chair, you're okay. Because there's been a lot of myths about feng shui, and yes. I know you, you're one of these people that likes to correct them. Yes. We always say that um, there's a lot of people running classes that will say you need to buy this, this, this and this, and you're saying in a lot of cases you don't have to go to great expense. No. You can make small changes. You the can. positioning rather than replacing is, is probably it, a big it, thing. It's more about the position and the placement of your furniture, the colours and the tones. Obviously a round um, desk or dining table is far better. You don't want too many sharp corners. So it does, it's not actually the cost of your furniture, it's, it's more the shape of your furniture and that is actually going to sit well within that environment. Okay, let's talk about exteriors, such okay. as roads and pavements and, and paths. Yes. Why are they important in making sure we get good luck? Well, your luck comes from your energy. So okay. if the energy can't find your front door or if it's coming towards your front door far too quickly, you're not going to be able to tap into that luck. So generally a path should always meander. Um, you should have a nice open space in front of your home. Your front door should be relatively clean and clear. So I always look at it and I think, well, if I have to step over things mm -hmm. to make it to a front door or I'm having trouble finding that front door because of the gardens and the pathway, well, the energy is actually going to do the same. So do you know how some houses have a direct entry from the pathway into the house? Yes. Is that a good or a bad thing? Because like my house, you have to go up the driveway and then turn left and then right. Yeah, your energy is actually better to meander because okay. um, if it can meander and it can turn slightly, well, it actually slows down. Where if you've got a T-junction in front of your home or you've got a pathway that's actually going directly to your front door, well, then all that energy is speeding there quite quickly um, and it doesn't actually get that chance to slow down and look around and kind of mm. decide where it wants to go. And what about roads? Is it like busy roads or small roads? roads. What's the importance there? Um, well, ro roads vary. So you've got your um, busy roads. Once again, the energy is flying past too quickly um, and you're not able to actually trap that energy in. Um, T-junctions, the energy will go too quickly as well. Cul-de-sacs? Cul-de-sacs are a really interesting one. When you look at a cul-de-sac, you'll find the people that live on in Australia on the left-hand side of the cul-de-sac often have far greener gardens and more expensive cars and better income than often the people on the right side of the cul-de-sac. Because when you look at the energy, your car comes into the cul-de-sac and you have to slow down to go around the left. Okay. And then you accelerate to go around the right. So all the houses on the right-hand side, the energy is kind of flying past them to leave, where the energy coming in on the left will actually slow down. Michelle, you're making good sense. Thank you. And uh, you've got a seminar coming up from a uh, school on Saturday, May the 16th. Tell us about that one. Yes, we've got a seminar on form school, which is um, a really good start for most people, particularly for beginners. Um, it explains those types of things so that they can go home and walk around their home in their garden and think, oh, I can fix that myself. So, Where is that going to be held? At Vivacious Living in Apple Cross. And that's going to be at 11.30 a.m. Actually, 9.30 9 to 11.30. Yes. 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. It's going to be on Saturday, May the 16th. It's form school. It's going to teach you all the basics so it you is. can maybe do it yourself at home. Yes, that's right. Everybody gets to even bring their own home plan in and um, we kind of follow it. So I actually teach them on their home and, and their surroundings. And your website address for people to find out more is, information? Is um, Complete Feng Shui.
Dot com. Dot com. That's it. Well yes. done. Now, can you tell us about, just quickly, I know we need to end the segment, but Feng Shui Meetup, what's that all about? Um, well, I've decided that there's so many people out there that actually do have an interest in Feng Shui, and there's so many questions that people want to ask. So I thought I'd start a meetup group at Vivacious Living where people can come for two hours. Like and an awareness thing. Yeah, so it's like an awareness group right on Feng Shui. They can bring their plans and different people can ask different questions, and then a lot of people can learn, learn the answers. So that's actually going to be run once a month. And, and, it, and it is really important to tell people, even if you, you don't have the money, don't stress because it doesn't normally mean you have to rebuild your house or throw out right. all your furniture or throw out your clothes. It can sometimes be reorganising and repositioning. That's right. And Clear that's what the you're clutter. Teaching. Complete Feng Shui. This is the lady that knows all about it. It's Michelle Castle. She's the director. Check out her website. And if you haven't checked out hers, go to thecouch.com.au and her link will be there as well. Thank you, Michelle. That's Look forward right. to the you're next welcome. time Thank we you. meet. Yes. Well done. You. That is it for today. We're going to go out with the lovely Kayla, she's a young Kayla. She's performing for us another fantastic song. It's called Masterpiece. Till next we meet. Have a great week. Bye bye, Australia. So much pressure. Why so loud? If you don't like my sound, you can turn it down. I got a